Good evening, Nick. Good evening. Can you tell me any of your plans leading up to Christmas? Yep, well, we're pretty nearly there now, really. This is the last uh, major event that I've got on, which is a, a lecture. I'm going to be talking about uh, man-made global warming and primarily who's behind it. It's very much in the news at present. Uh, before Christmas, I've got to go down for uh, one last uh, day and so I'm meeting people down in Barking to build things up for the election campaign uh, next year. Then it's uh, a few days off and sorting things out at home, getting ready for next year, because this really is going to be you know, one major event. My feeling now is we're highly likely to get an election at the end of February or the beginning of March rather than in May. I think the Brown will cut and run before the budget because the country's finances are such an incredible mess that if he leaves it any later the Labour Party could do so badly they could be wiped out. So I think he'll cut and run by, by March. So we've literally got a few weeks of organising and then straight into a campaign. It's going to be mad, so I hope that uh, everybody does what I do, have a few days off and come back raring to go right at the start of January. What other things will you be fighting the election on? Well, as we've already made clear, we're going to be making a great deal of our opposition to the Afghan war because there's an enormous gap between the political elite and what they want and what the public wants and we're going to aim to fill that gap but of course that's not going to be the only thing that we'll be talking about we will certainly not let go in any way on our position as the people who've always talked and warned about the problems of mass immigration in general and Islam in particular and we're not going to go soft or backpedalling on that we're going to be going hammer and tongs on that uh, although of course Europe takes uh, a lesser role, the question of uh, Europe and the European Union, takes a lesser role in the public's mind in a general election. It's a very important thing uh, for a section of the electorate who we aim to get, of course the people who aren't sure whether to vote British National Party or UKIP. Uh, so again, we'll be talking about uh, Europe and the problems of our membership of the European Union so that we don't lose sight on that. Uh, so I think really put that, Afghanistan, immigration and Europe that's pretty much enough. Yes, the country is an economic basket case, uh, but it's not really feasible for us with our resources to get across the fact that a, you know, a nationalist economic policy is the only way out of the mess. Everyone's going to be talking about economics and coming up with their own schemes. So if we're asked, we'll talk about it. But primarily, it's Afghanistan, Europe and immigration. Is the British National Party ready for an election? Not yet, no. Nobody's ready for an election yet. Um, I guess the Labour Party is more ready than some. The key reason I think that they'll think in terms of February or very early March is that uh, with the trade unions, they've got more people who can do telephone canvassing, I reckon, than all the other parties put together. And if you have an election in February, March, it's so cold, it's so dark, that conventional door knocking isn't going to happen. So that then allows their advantage in telephone canvassing to come in and help them. Now, we can't match that. Actually, I don't think the people, the public, like telephone canvassing. We excel by being there, knocking on doors, talking to people in their own homes, in their own communities. Uh, and we'll have to do that. But we're, we're not ready for the election yet. Nobody is. Uh, but we're well advanced. The television broadcast is now well on the way already. Uh, the leaflets are designed. The plans are all there. We've worked out you know, our strategy. We've worked out the slogans. We've worked out the publicity material. Uh, we're pretty nearly there. Uh, we've got some fundraising to do yet. But, um, no, by the time it comes, we'll be ready. I believe that, you being a Euro MP, you can answer getting those to leave this delivery. Uh, yes, indeed. Well, not so much delivered. Um, uh, both Andrew and myself have a budget of about £40,000 a year uh, for publicity about our work in the European Parliament and on behalf of our constituents. Not about the British National Party, you know, not about our politics. Uh, but nevertheless, when people hear about you know, what we're doing as British National Party MEPs, it has an effect. Uh, so for this first year, we're only MEPs for half the year, so we've got £20,000 each to spend on that. Uh, the leaflets are now printing a huge run of superb full-colour glossy A3s. Of course, they're there for use uh, in Yorkshire and Humberside and in the North West constituency, uh, but all the units there are going to be getting supplies of those immediately after Christmas, uh, and I hope they'll, in fact I'm sure that everyone's going to hit the ground running with those in the new year. And certainly for that whole swathe of the north of the country, uh, it's going to be the biggest uh, output of really good quality material from, from you know, about British National Party people 
and what we're doing in the European Union that's ever been seen. So that's going to give us a really good start to the election campaign in the north. For the rest of the country, near the Midlands, the south, elsewhere, we've got to make our own start. But we're going to have some cracking publicity material out early in the new year. So as I say, everyone needs to take a breath, a bit of a breath, a bit of a breather, uh, and have a good Christmas and a new year, and then straight back to work. Right, thank you very much. Thank you.